I'll take a minute to show you guys a project we've been working on. Chris has gotten around to finally installing this thing. And uh, there it is. I'll turn on this light switch. So we gotta get a light. There it is, our new inverter charger unit. Uh, all installed in the travel trailer. Now travel trailers are a little different because uh, we don't have a big wet bay or a basement like a fifth wheel. There's no generator compartments. And so we really struggled with where we were going to install this unit. And uh, this was pretty much the best spot. This is our pass-through. There's the outside there. And uh, there's not really a solid wall to install anything to. And so you're kind of kind of stuck. You don't have a, a good mounting surface. So Chris got this Unistrut is what it's called. And you can get it at your big box stores. And... Uh, in like a home Home Depot or Lowe's and you cut it up it comes with all those brackets or you could buy all those brackets for different installations but it's just bolted to the floor there I don't know if you can see it and this inverter they want installed about 10 inches off the floor so we had to find a way to suspend it there's a bracket at the top cross part there and it's hung there and uh, the batteries are just a couple feet in front of this wall I've got some uh, other video shot that I'll insert here, but um, that's two watt cable going from the inverter to the battery. And then uh, the wires run under the trailer. I'll go outside and show you guys that here in a second. But uh, real clean, real tight install, looks great. And uh, I'll go outside and show you the rest here. So here we are in the pass throw. And uh, of course there's the, the inverter as you've seen from under the, the bed. And there's the wall, and I've got a video there that shows what it looks like. This wall removed, you can see the screws. This thing was just stapled in from the factory, so we removed this entire wall. And there's a, there's a bit of a cavity behind there, and allowed uh, access really easily through the front of the trailer without actually drilling any, any holes. So some screws there, it's put back real nice and neat, looks stock. And there's a, uh, there's a light switch, look at this. And it's the same light as this under the bed. Three-way switches. Uh, that's another one of our upgrades. Or Chris did that, and uh, really slick. You, either side of the pass through and under the bed, you can turn or turn off these lights. So there's that. And you come out front here. You look down here, you know, inside this loom. Here's our uh, here's our cables coming in. Like I said, two watt cable goes into the inner, in, into the battery, and the wires come out under here and under the trailer. They use this. Uh, let's go over here. They use this corrugated plastic as a insulator or whatever you can see it there and it's it's literally like cardboard made out of plastic and it's really light it's really flexible and uh, if you just take the uh, the screws uh, out of there you can pull it down halfway back to the trailer where the wiring enters your trailer and uh, you have access to all the framing and uh, to run your wires it's not that hard to take down it's a little tedious to put back up but uh, the power drill and a, the right socket you can you can do it pretty quick and like I said it's uh, it's light and it's flexible, so it gets out of your way. You can t pull it down and roll it up and uh, get under here with a creeper and get your stuff done. So uh, if you go back in the... Believe it or not, these are the only two places I had to go through the frame, which I did paint after I drilled it. And they got their clamps on there. But if you look up here, these two clamps I put in, there's already holes. How, how about that? Well, the problem is when you get down to that end over there, it looks like uh, it's going to be a little too tight to use those kind of holes, so I'm just going to probably clamp a different way along the side over there. But it looks like it's going to work perfectly, so I'm stoked. I've already got the battery cable mounted, or the battery monitor cable. I actually already routed right along through this normal chain that's already here, so I got that taken care of today, too. All right, just a quick video to show some progress. The creeper here. Grab the creeper. Let's see here. Roll right on under here. So, current progress. I got those wires routed, and I got the network cables routed out of that hole and up over and inside. I uh, tied up a couple extra ties on these wires that they never had any ties to start with, and. Uh, you can see that I got uh, the wires routed through there, through here, all the way down. There are a couple more clamps here I put on. Let's see, there's a better better shot. And then 
tied all the wires along with ran the network cables for for the inverter and it runs past all the way over that way the back where it goes up up and top so it's actually back there I put the panel on a little bit right there so only thing left now is just to put the panel back on and then we'll deal with the inside awesome trailer also we got a uh, control panel which is optional and it's up here and this baby here is pretty neat you can see that and we got that and uh, the battery monitor we had before we made this upgrade and this entire panel is something Chris uh, put together, had custom made, uh, engraved, changed all the switches to black, labeled them a little better. So you that just say slide in or slide out. It says right slide, left slide, main lights. You can see, turn that light on, outdoor light. And then we put, uh, put the sea level tank monitors on while we were under the trailer. So you get rid of those old probe style ones and these uh, sea level ones just stick on. And you can use these existing wiring, which is real nice. You don't have to run more wires, but it's also got a built-in battery monitor, and it's pretty, pretty close there. And uh, we're in storage, so we don't have any water in our tanks. But see, gives you a lot better indication. The only, uh, the only problem we really had was the black tank was a little hard to get accurate. So, as far as we're concerned, it's empty. We dumped it and cleaned it and everything before we put it in storage, but. We keep a little bit of fluid and antifreeze in it during the winter, so I think it's reading about 13%. Just to squeeze this in, put down here. And what is that? This is going to be the transfer switch. Or the bypass switch? Yeah, see? So I'm just going to figure out how to mount it right there. So we're going to put a bypass switch in right there so that if anything goes wrong with the inverter, we can revert to the uh, stock uh, installation and go back uh, to the regular charger. So here's the cabinet where the circuit breaker, right here, damn it, yeah, right here is the circuit breaker that was installed in the same uh, stock panel. There was room here by the side to install this circuit breaker between the inverter and the uh, panel. The wires run uh, up under the trailer and come into there. It's really nice and clean because it's in the stock, uh, stock panel. We didn't have to remove anything or uh, do any more cutting to the cabinetry. Keeps it all nice and tidy and stock looking. So we're doing a fitment check now to see if uh, this additional circuit breaker will be uh, will fit in the uh, stock panel. And this is going to be for future solar panel in uh, uh, installation. And this will be able to cut the power from the solar to the controller, which we're hoping to mount also somewhere in this area. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to put it yet, but that's the plan to have, uh, have the ability to cut the solar input right there. So yeah, if you just cut that little tab out there, it should fit and uh, be pretty clean. Sorry, pre-made to cut out too. Yeah. Also, I've have uh, prepared some holes up here. You can see, so that I can mount this bracket right here for the solar panel circuit breaker. It can go. You can see it goes right into here. But the problem I have is these nuts right here. It's going to be hard to hold them tight in here, so what I'm going to do is just put a little dab of epoxy on them so that all I have to do is put the screw up, the screw up from right here. That would make it uh, just so much easier when I go to install it, and then I can route the, the wires to that so that we can disconnect the circuit breakers, to, or disconnect the solar panels. Alright, I thought I'd shoot a quick video. I'm installing a... Uh, a bypass switch for the inverter just in case something happens with the inverter I wanted to make sure that we could just flip the switch and it would be everything back to hunky-dory back to normal back to the way it was before we had the inverter this here's my Harbor Freight light anyway so here's the switch itself they're not not too cheap but it's really well built it has a um, where is that at a little switch that goes on the Little switch that goes on the front here, little panel to know which way is which. I uh, created this little custom mount I made from some scrap metal I found and uh, mounted it right here to the old converter that's in here that we won't be using. In fact, you can see here I locked out the breaker switch so that uh, we don't have to unwire it just in case we do need to go back to it at some point. I can just 
do that. So I'll do that. And these wires here that I have hanging here are going to end up going right to the back of the uh, circuit breaker I have here, which uh, when mounted in there will be all back to normal. So that's where I'm at with that. And I'll show you when I'm done. So Chris and I are down at the trailer and we finished up the uh, install on the Victron inverter charger and uh, he's changing the parameters on the battery charger portion of it now. <clears throat> he's uh, installed a, a data cable under the kitchen counter here where you can't see it. It comes up there where the battery monitor enters the uh, cabinet right down there. And then there's a uh, interface that comes with it here and then you just come and... Uh, simple as logging into your laptop and uh, getting in there and changing it.